It is election day, number of issues on the ballot, and uh, everyone's paying a lot of attention to the mayor's race in San Francisco. And as voters go to the polls to choose the next mayor there, there is a move to end ranked choice voting in San Francisco elections. A resolution was introduced today calling for a return to the old-fashioned runoff system. ABC 7's Vic Lee is live at City Hall tonight with the story. Vic? Well, Supervisors Sean Ellsburn and Mark Farrow introduced the resolution today here at City Hall. Ranked choice voting was approved by San Francisco voters more than eight years ago. And since then, it's generated quite a bit of controversy and confusion. So today, we went down here to City Hall and asked voters here to tell us just how the system works. And here, my wife tried to explain it to me, you know, one ear out the other. I'd have to be a physicist probably to tell you how it works. <laughs> the person who gets the highest number one votes, the, the however many second choice of votes they get has a different and lower weight and so forth. So each of the categories of votes has a different weight. But so many people don't understand how it works. Plain and simple. That's why Supervisor Mark Farrell is proposing a charter amendment to end ranked choice voting in the city. In this system, if a candidate receives a majority of first choice votes, he wins. If not, the last place candidate is eliminated, and those who chose that candidate have their votes transferred to their second choice. That process is repeated until a candidate gets more than 50%. Farrow says last November's Oakland mayor's race is a perverse outcome of the voting system. Gene Kwan ultimately beat presumed frontrunner State Senator Don Parada, even though he had a plurality with the most number one votes. When somebody is elected mayor with less than 25% of the first place votes, people really look at that and say, something's wrong. This doesn't work. Proponents of the system argue that it gives voters more choices, saves taxpayer money because there's no runoff election, and elects someone who truly ends up with a majority of those who voted. Gautam Dutta specializes in election law. He says ranked choice voting encourages candidates to be nicer to their opponents. It forces candidates to focus more on the issues and focus more on reaching out to the broadest possible group of people. Farrell believes it's made no difference. Look at this year's mayor's race in San Francisco. Tell me there hasn't been negative campaigning. That's all it's been the last month. Now, this resolution goes before the Rules Committee for a hearing. And this is the first truly competitive election for mayor in which ranked choice voting may make a difference. Now, in 2007, a Gavin Newsom won a re-election for mayor with more than 70% of the votes, so there was no reason to count the second and third choices. But again, conventional wisdom this time is that those other choices may be important. Vic Lee, ABC 7 News. Yeah, undoubtedly they will. Thank you, Vic.